Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Alexandria. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here on this uh, wonderful Sunday morning. It may be darker outside than normal with the cloud cover, but it is always a wonderful thing to be able to praise God on uh, the Lord's Day. And so wherever you are tuning in, I pray that uh, you are either surrounded by someone uh, that knows you and loves you or that you are feeling and experiencing the love of our Heavenly Father and that this is a time that blesses you as we worship and praise the Lord. If you're visiting with us for the first time or even for the 50th time, I want to say thank you for joining us. I know that there are many other places you could tune in for worship right now uh, or that you could visit live. And so I pray that this is a time that blesses you as uh, much as your being here blesses us. Now, if you have the ability to sign in in the chat area to leave us a comment, then please let us know that you are worshiping with us. Let us know who's with you in the room. Um, and if you can't, that's okay. After the service, you can go to our website, www.fumca.org, and there are links that you can click on right at the top that will allow you to check in for worship, uh, that will let you leave prayer requests in the form of an email that will go to the pastors, and that will also allow you to give uh, financially to continue the ministry of the Lord, specifically through what's happening here in this church. And so I just want to say thank you to all those, uh, to all of you who are giving and allowing this ministry to continue uh, to be a blessing, not just every Sunday, but in the small ways that we're trying to get back into the community during the week. Um, if you can get into the chat, one, let us know that you're here, and two, let us know if there's anything we can be praying alongside you with or for. Uh, this is a community that loves to be able to pray with and for one another, and while the pastors will be lifting uh, your concerns or your joys up when it comes time to the pastoral prayer, um, I know that there are many who are tuning in, and if they're not tuned in this morning, they'll tune in throughout the week who will be seeing those and they'll be praying alongside as well. We've got great prayer warriors and they want to be able to celebrate. And so I pray that uh, as we join together and lift our voices, that uh, you feel what it is to be grateful, thankful. Uh, we're experiencing in this uh, particular worship service, the scripture is about uh, an attitude of gratitude as we tell our kids. And so let's go with such an attitude to the Lord as we sing our first song, Great Are You, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken and great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out praise to you only you great are you God you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you, only you. And all the earth, and all the earth. 
earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord one more time and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing and great are you lord it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you Well, good morning again, everyone. For those who may not know me, my name is Katie Glass, and I am the associate pastor here, and I am so glad that you have joined us in worship. If you are just tuning in, please feel free to comment and let us know that you are worshiping with us, as well as to send in any prayer requests or joys you'd like to share. There are so many in the comment section with you who are looking at them, who are praying for you, and who are this prayer warrior family lifting one another up. And in just a few moments, we'll lift them up in service. Um, I'll be able to go in and check and lift those names up, so please feel free to comment anything that's going on that you need prayer or that you'd like to celebrate this morning. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship as it appears on the screen. God comes into a world filled with uncertainties and darkness. God seeks out the voids of belief and conviction. God embraces the wounded and the broken God knocks down the walls of division and strife. God is the candle shining in the darkness of our days. God is the light of our lives. God is the one who makes all things new. Praise be to God, now and forevermore. And then before we go on to our next song, I invite you to join me in prayer this morning. Holy and merciful God, as we are gathered in your presence from our living rooms, our back porches, from all across the country, wherever we may be this morning, Lord, I pray that you would still the busyness and the chaos of our world and in our hearts, that you would provide for us this moment and this time to focus solely on you, on our relationship with you, on, on your words and on your teachings. And Lord, give us peace as we take this next step towards you in our discipleship journey. I pray all of this in your name. Amen. And so we continue on talking about uh, how great our Lord is by seeing how great are you, God. How great is our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, it trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And I will sing. How great, how great is our God? And age to age he stands. Oh, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, oh, Father. 
Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. We continue in worship this morning with our affirmation of faith. I invite you to join me along with the words on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I do have several names to lift up this morning, um, and I invite you that as I say these names, continue to be looking in the comment section, praying for one another, because there are several, several families lifted up this morning. Uh, first, we want to pray for Billy Eggers and his family as his sister died last week. We know that grief is a tough thing to go through, and so we pray for them as well as Rodney, whose sister also passed away this week. And so we want to continue to hold those families as well as the Goodwin family as Tom's mother passed away from COVID this week and the Slater family who lost a father to COVID. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of loss going on right now, so we want to continue to walk with those families who are experiencing this grief, um, as well as uh, sh the Shirley Rowe family and the Jose Benson family who have lost people to COVID in this past week. 
Um, we also want to continue to lift up Edith Rabelais as she is recovering from a stroke, as well as Susan McConnell, and continue to pray for B. Jeter as she is in hospice and um, doing pretty well. Uh, we want to continue to lift up Chuck, who suffered a heart attack last night, um, and Jean Rowe, who has tested positive for COVID, as well as continuing to lift up our own Steve Barry, who is recovering from an open heart surgery but is doing really well. And then finally, Nancy Owens Winstead, who fell and broke her leg recently. So we're going to continue to pray for all of those. I'm going to scroll through, make sure I haven't missed anyone. If I have, I do apologize in advance. We do go back and look at these um, and lift them up during our prayers during the week. So if you have one and you join us late in the service, or if you're watching after you haven't caught us live, please feel free to write those in the comments, and we do go back and look at these. I'm not seeing any others added, so I invite you now to join me in prayer. Gracious God, you heard the list of names that were lifted up this morning. So many have died because of COVID in this past week, and Lord, we know that any death is difficult, that any death is painful and brings about sadness and anger and grief. So Lord, with all of those families listed today and, and all the families throughout the world who have lost loved ones to COVID this week, I pray that you would just walk with them, that you would gather them in your hands and hold them close, pouring upon them your eternal peace. Lord, help those families to know that Whatever they're feeling, whatever emotions they're in right now, it's okay. And that wherever they are in this journey of grief, you are with them. Lord, this morning we lift up those listed who are recovering from falls, from surgeries, from strokes. That you would be with them as they continue to go to rehab and take the steps to wellness. We know that you are the great physician who works in ways that we don't even understand. So I pray that you would bring healing to their lives in the way that only you can. And Lord, I pray for our community, that as we continue to battle COVID, we would each do our parts to help keep people safe, that we would work together to see your glory in your honor in this place. Lord, I thank you for all the ways that you have called your people to be your hands and feet and that you continue to call us and you continue to give us the skills we need to move forward. Lord, help us to recognize your call. Help us to see the ways that you have prepared us even before we knew you. And Lord, when we fall short, when we forget to follow your world and we, we stray to our own, Lord, I pray that you would offer us direction and give us the grace of forgiveness. And Lord, as you forgive us, help us to remember those in our lives whom we need to forgive as well as those who we would like forgiveness from. Place their names in our hearts and call us to mend that relationship to offer forgiveness as you do in our own lives. And Lord, as this virus continues and people are still at home, still lonely, I pray that you would be with them for those who have depression and anxiety. Lord, for those who are lonely and full of doubt. Lord, I pray that your spirit would overwhelm them. And in their loneliness and in their darkness, they would see you as their eternal light. I pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. So we come to a time in the service where we get to hear from the word of God. Uh, we're finishing up after a couple of weeks, we're finishing up Mark chapter one, and we are in uh, verses 29 to 39. 
Now remember, Jesus has done a lot in chapter 1. There's been his baptism, uh, there's been preaching, there's been the call of discipleship, there's been exorcism, and today we hear about Christ as the one who is healer and the one who goes to God for some very much needed one-on-one time. And so I invite you to hear the reading of the Word of God as we hear it in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. After leaving the synagogue, Jesus, James, and John went home with Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed, sick with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served them. That evening at sunset, people brought to Jesus those who were sick or demon-possessed. The whole town gathered near the door. He healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases, and he threw out many demons. But he didn't let the demons speak because they recognized him. Early in the morning, well before sunrise, Jesus rose and went to a deserted place where he could be alone in prayer. Simon and those with him tracked him down, and when they found him, they told him, everyone is looking for you. So we reply, let's head in another direction. Let's go to the nearby villages so that I can preach there too, for that's why I've come. He traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and throwing out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we are your people and we long to be more so. In these few precious moments, we pray that your spirit would do the work that only your spirit can that you would help us to realize who we are in you so that we might find our place in this world that you've created, in this body of Christ that we have joined, and that we might invite others to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there's a lot going on in these ten verses. Jesus has shown up. He's gone to the synagogue. He's preached. They've been amazed by his preaching and teaching. This is last week. And then he exercised the demon. And remember, that was, that was the first long pericope, the first long story that we get in this whole chapter. Uh, and that's where the amazement of a God who is always in action uh, begins to be seen for the first time in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus is going and going and going. And then we see a long enough pause to see that God isn't just about talking. But God is the word, or Jesus isn't just about talking, but Jesus is the word made flesh that calls us into action for God, is a God of action. And we see that action taking place in the form of exorcism, which is healing of mind and body and soul uh, last week. And, And this week we see that in the form of physical healing. So right after he left the synagogue, he and a couple of his first disciples the boys uh, decided to go to Peter's house. And when Peter shows up, you can just imagine how this goes, right? At least I can envision how it might happen in, in our house. I bring a couple of friends and we walk in and all of a sudden there's a sick in-law or a sick grandparent or uh, a sick kid. And I met at the door by Rob and he's like, are you sure you want to bring everybody in? You know, unclean, unclean. And, and so Peter probably turns around and says, guys, I don't know if we should go in there. I'm worried. My wife is scared. And Jesus, in typical Jesus fashion, without saying anything, says, I've got this. And he goes and he enters into the space and he heals Peter's mother-in-law. And there is service that happens. Now, let's pause there for a second because if all that we pointed out was The guys showed up, the men showed up, and it was probably around dinner time because it was right after they'd gone to worship with the sundown, and the lady of the house is sick, so we heal her, and then she gets up and serves. That could sound very gender gender stereotypical, and it would have fit for the timeline. It would have fit for the the culture of the time as well, but, but that's not the Jesus that we see when we look at the grand picture, when we look at the meta narrative of who God is and who Christ is, and who we're called to be as the church. So there's something else that's going on, and and I want to share with you a story of a different person that had a similar but slightly different experience. Uh, Back in 2000, there was a 23-year-old, his name was Cornelius Anderson III, nicknamed Mike, and Mike was arrested for robbing a Burger King at gunpoint. 
He was sentenced to 13 years in prison, released on bail, and told to await orders on when he would show up to serve his time. However, the orders never came. There was a clerical, or, there was a, a clerical error, and Anderson never went to prison. So instead of using his freedom to commit more crime, Anderson started his own construction business. He became a youth football coach, and he volunteered in his local church. He also got married, he had three kids, and he became a well-liked member of the community. Thirteen years later, they discovered the clerical error. And so the state went and they put Anderson behind bars for an entire year. But as the case was reviewed and it gained international coverage, there's an online position for his release that was offered and signed by over 35,000 people. After a court hearing that lasted a mere 10 minutes, the judge conceded that Anderson was a changed man and granted him credit for the years that he should have been in prison. And a teary-eyed Anderson walked out of the courthouse with his wife and daughter, telling reporters how grateful he was to God. Now let's take that and go back to Peter's house. Because in this particular story that happened 21 years ago, we see a man that was sick in some form or fashion because something drove him to think that violence, that theft, that, that stealing at gunpoint was okay. So while it wasn't a fever, there was something inside of him that was soul sick. We call that sin in the Christian faith. And out of that soul sickness, he acted, and out of his action, he was convicted. However, in that moment of conviction that should have sent him to jail, he was also convicted by the spirit within, and there was healing that took place. We talked about that with the exorcism last week and how the healing that can take place from all of the, the darkness that can attack us heals us. The, the word salvation it is actually in the Greek a word that means healing, which is why every time I get the opportunity, I talk about sin as sin sickness, heart sickness, soul sickness, and God longs to heal us. And total salvation, perfect salvation, is perfect healing that we can experience. And we may catch glimpses of that feeling of perfect healing at times in our lives, but ultimately, perfect salvation, perfect healing, ironically happens when we die. The thing that some of us might be the most afraid of is the thing, the, the opportunity, the threshold moment that provides us perfect healing. And so we see this man who had that moment of conviction with the state that didn't lead to prison, but allowed conviction in his heart to heal him in such a way that he turned his life around and he gave it to service. He gave it to his church. He gave it to the community. He gave it to family. So much so that when he finally got caught, when not he, when the heir finally got caught 13 years later, People stood around him and beside him, not because he was the guy that held someone up at gunpoint in Burger King, but because he was Mike, my neighbor, Mike, my friend, Mike, my kid's football coach. He was Mike, the guy that sits next to me in church on Sunday. Mike, the man who joins me in my men's Bible study. Mike, my husband, Mike, my dad. All of those different ways that Mike could be identified changed because Jesus heals and out of that healing, Mike offered himself in service. Peter's mom experienced the same. To have a fever at this time wasn't something where you could just go to the medicine cabinet and grab some ibuprofen or some, some Tylenol. It was a serious thing. Nobody really knew what caused it, and, and it could be debilitating to the point of death. I'm sure that Peter's wife was scared and, and sad and maybe even already planning what a funeral might look like. This was serious stuff, and we know what that feels like. I was having a conversation just this morning with some folks here at church about that dreaded, not-in-your-stomach feeling that, we're, that we have for those that we know and love, or even for the strangers that we hear about whose family gets taken by COVID, especially if they're elderly or if they have preconditions. Uh, they go into the hospital with COVID and pneumonia, and we just don't know if they're going to come out and you can't go in to visit. Or if you can, it's only one person, but the family can't surround a loved one. Take that feeling of, of just dread or, or grief or sadness. And that's probably what, I, what my sanctified imagination, that's, that's what Mary, not Mary, that's what Peter's wife would have been feeling. And so when Peter walks in and he sees 
his wife's face and he he sees how gravely ill his mother-in-law has become. He turns to the man that he's just seen who has healed and pulled out a demon. And with no words, Jesus walks in and steps into action and heals her. And as she sits up and as the fever's broken and as she realizes that she gets to see another sunrise, as, as her daughter-in-law begins crying even louder, but, but it's tears of joy because mom's going to be here tomorrow. And, and as Peter is amazed once more and as James and John are going two in one day, then out of all of that, she rises and she begins to serve. Not because she's a woman who has to serve the men, but because she is a child of God who has experienced the loving wholeness and holiness that has healed her because of who God is. And out of that, she serves in gratitude. So I want to ask us this morning, how are our eyes and our hearts and our souls at seeing through a lens of gratefulness. And, and I mean in two different ways. Grateful, G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L. How thankful are we for the, the big and the small things? How, how easy is it for us to fall into that mindset, into that heart set, into that soul set? And then the next question is, how do we express that gratitude? Have we flexed those muscles of practice so that we're letting folks know, hey, I see you. Hey, I appreciate you. And it doesn't just have to be the formality of a thank you card. It could be a, a quick text message or a verbal communication. I've seen how marriages can do a complete 180 when, when spouses or partners begin to recognize the small things. In fact, in our own marriage, there have been seasons where we could feel that it was going like this, and, and when the roller coaster feeling was making my stomach come up into my throat, that's when I started realizing I need to pay attention to the little things, and I'd say, thank you. Oh, thank you, husband, for, for folding the clothes, or thank you for washing the dishes this morning. You didn't have to do that before you went out the door. Or thank you for cooking a fantastic meal. And those small recognitions can do a whole lot of healing. And as we live actively, intentionally as disciples who are trying to build community, we're always building community wherever we are, whether it's in our families, whether it's in our homes, whether it's in our neighborhoods, or whether it's in places of work, school, or beyond. And, and so intentionally focusing on those moments. When was the last time you turned to a friend in school and said, hey, thanks for? Maybe it's, hey, thanks for, for letting me copy your notes when I was out sick. Hey, thanks for being there for conversation. It would be really lonely without you. Or, you know, thanks for covering my back on the football field. That tackle would have really hurt. Whatever it is, big or small, do we show expressions of gratitude? And the reason that we are able to see these things, the reason that we're able to express these things is because of a love that God fills us with. So the other grateful that I would ask us to consider this morning is hyphenated, great, G-R-E-A-T dash full. We are full of the greatness of God. Not because we are great, but because God is great. And we just sang about it twice. How great is our God? Great are you, Lord. That same great God that we sing for and sing to is the God who's made a home in our hearts. And so we are full of greatness. Should we choose to realize, accept it, and then own it by living into it? And so those actions that we do that allow others to express gratitude to us or for us, those actions of service come because we are filled with God's greatness. We are healed. We are blessed. We are forgiven. We are offered grace. We are, whatever the, the healing is for you this day, filled by God's greatness so that we can reach out to the world and show how grateful we are to God. Active Christian disciples are grateful so that they can be grateful. Now, as we move from the fact that Peter's mom served out of a, an attitude of thankfulness, we then see that Jesus heals a whole bunch of people, and then he goes and he pauses and he takes a break. 
And that's an important thing for us to realize as well. If we're going to be disciples who are great filled, if we're going to have God within us, then there are going to be moments that we have to be able to say no to the rest of the world, specifically so that we can say yes to God. And those moments are, are quiet times. We, we can't say yes to God in the middle of having a great time with a bunch of girlfriends at uh, Chili's for a dinner night. We, we can, but it, it's not going to fill us the same way as spending some time in the Word and honestly searching our hearts and our souls for what God is trying to tell us. We're not going to be able to tune into God and be great filled the same way if we're standing on the scrimmage line or if we're standing at the uh, three-point line or or if we are sitting in the office around the water cooler, God's in those moments, but we're going to be tuning into God in a way that can be distracted and would be more about evangelism or outreach than it would be about our specific relationship with the Lord. And so Jesus models for us what it is to take time to say no to the world, no to work, no even to ministry and action itself. Because spending quiet time with his father was important. And if we are disciples who follow Jesus, then it needs to be important to us as well. Extrovert or introvert, being able to tune into God in silence or in meditation or with quiet music is a healing moment for the soul. I've seen it in so many different times Before COVID, we would have a regular Tuesday morning group that would come and sit in the chapel for prayer at 30 minutes, and we'd start with about five minutes of sharing what's going on, who we need to be praying for, and then we'd put on some quiet music, the candles would be lit, the lights would be low, and we'd all sit together, but there would be no speaking while we all prayed to God. And if someone felt moved to speak out loud, we would hear a brother or sister who'd just suddenly start start praying aloud, and then when it was time to stop, they'd stop. And it was beautiful. It was one of mine and Pastor Katie's favorite times of the week to be able to just go and sit and be with God, but be with God with others who longed to be with the Lord as well. And there was a pastor over in England who was well-renowned at the time. A couple of young men were thinking about going into the ministry, and they were so excited that they were going to get to visit this pastor's church. And and they got there a little early, and the pastor, their hero, greeted them at the door, and, and he said, hey, uh, I, I, I can hear your excitement about worship this morning, and, and you're already asking me questions about where we're going in the Word, but I want to take you to the most important place in this church. It's not, it's not the sanctuary. And he walked him down to the basement, where there were at least 75 people who were praying before worship, lifting up everyone that was going to be there that day, whether they knew him by name or not, the pastor, the message, the work of the church. And those two young men could feel an energy. There's something that happens when we pause and we go to God in prayer. So if you haven't ever joined us on Mondays or Thursdays, I'm thankful that Pastor Katie leads that prayer time at noon. And and you can join us starting tomorrow Uh, But right at noon, it's never more than 20, 30 minutes, if it's that long. It's a way to pause in the middle of your day and to be able to hear what's going on in the lives of whoever joins in. And Pastor Katie or I usually have a devotion. It's usually her, and that's why I say I'm thankful. Um, But there's a devotion, a scripture reading, and and then there's prayer. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to be able to be still. Because right after Jesus had that time with God, Peter comes running. He says, everyone's looking for you. I mean, you have gotten a name, Jesus. It's amazing. You showed up, and and now you're the man. The the reporters want to talk to you, and the New York Times wants an interview. And I think even some of the guys on Wall Street want to know if there's something that they can ask you. And and everybody, but, but they're all right here, and they're in my backyard. And Jesus says, great, let's go somewhere else. Because the last part of what we see in this message is that Jesus isn't about being a hometown hero. He's not about trying to lift up his own name, his own image. Jesus heals. Jesus saves. God in action takes time out to be reconnected, to be filled with that greatness at all times. For Jesus, it's to be tuned into that greatness at all times. And then he takes that charged battery and he goes back out to reach out to the next person that needs to be healed, to reach out to the next person that needs to see light. 
And that's who we're called to be, church. We're not called to huddle in the center of the sanctuary, but we're called to be those who, as we leave, turn our backs on the sanctuary and look out into the world that's around us and see the pain, see the holes, see the hurt, see the hunger, and and to find a way to cross the gaps that we really don't know how to cross if we're being perfectly honest. And that's what it is to truly follow Christ into the next city. Because he came, he says, he came so that he could continue moving on and continue preaching there too. And we've seen that preaching isn't just about being a certified pastor, a local pastor or an ordained clergy person or a deacon. Preaching isn't just about words, though there is an aspect of needing to be able to tell our story with hope. But preaching also happens as we serve. Witnessing can be a form of preaching. Love in action is definitely a form of preaching as long as out of our action we point to God and we give the glory and the praise to God and don't allow it to be something that we hold on to for ourselves. That is what separates the wonderful atheist philanthropist from the poor but selfless Christian is the ability to be able to give from the heart and give the glory to God. And and it's all coming from a place of realizing and recognizing our great filledness so that out of gratefulness we can show the world how great is our God. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we can't say in enough ways how wonderful you are. Uh, Honestly, we probably forget it more than we could come up with adjectives to describe you. And so for those times when, when we've forgotten who you are and who we are to you, and out of that loneliness or that hurt or that sadness, we've managed to hurt ourselves or others, God, forgive us. And help us to begin intentionally today seeking and searching for small ways that we can show our gratitude, for small ways that we can realize just how great you are within us, to recognize that and to offer it to you, and then out of that recognition to serve this world that we continue to pray will become more like your kingdom in heaven. Heal us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we continue to the next form of healing that God offers us. There's two sacraments in the church, or at least in the the Protestant church. Uh, The sacrament of baptism, where we are convicted and we are brought into the life of the church. The the one-time promise that God makes to us that never has to be made again, where we are healed because of who Christ is. And we are made whole once more. But then the sacrifice or the sacrament that we are invited to celebrate regularly, daily as United Methodists, if we can receive it, is, is the sacrament of communion. And on the night that Jesus began the journey to the cross, he took the bread at his final meal. He broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup And he blessed it, he gave thanks to the Father, and then he passed it amongst his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you think of it, and remember me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we once again offer ourselves with joy and thanksgiving and gratitude as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we do all of this asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, would you come upon these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine, bless them so that they may be the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by that same Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray that you would continue to heal us, that you would continue to make us whole, one with Christ, one with each other, and one ministry to all the world. Until you come in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. 
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we ask all these things as the church that you have called us to be. And all God's people said, Amen. And so I invite you now, if you have the bread and the fruit of the vine in front of you, to receive the body and the blood of Christ, the body that was broken for you and the blood of Christ that was shed for you, and know that you don't have to be United Methodist to receive this gift from God. This is the Lord's table. Christ is the host. And the only thing necessary is a desire to grow in relationship with God. And if you are receiving communion and you don't have that relationship with God and you're wondering, how can I have it? Please don't hesitate to reach out to the pastor, or to me as, as one of the pastors, I hope I could have that conversation with you, but, but go to our website, fumca.org, click prayer concerns, and let us know that you want us to call you, and we can have that conversation with you, because that is one of the best parts of being able to be a pastor, is to help people realize just how much God loves them, especially for the first time. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Father God, we praise your name for the grace and mercy and the blessings you pour into our lives, especially those we remember as we come to your table, as we know all the ways that you have worked in the lives of those who have come before us, and we know the ways that you continue to work in our own lives. Lord, give us that strength to follow your example, to fill our souls with you, and to go out into the world and be your hands and feet. I praise your holy and unending name. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks. We're going to sing this through one more time, but we're going to sing it just a little bit higher because we want to be able to give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks. And so as we give thanks to the Lord and we've received from the table and we've been filled by the word of God, I invite Pastor Katie to come up and share any announcements for how we can continue to offer our gratitude by living into the community of Christ. Absolutely. So as Ashley mentioned earlier, we do meet on Facebook Live at noon on Mondays and Thursdays to gather together in prayer. And if you were with us earlier in the service or if you plan to go back and watch, you know that we had so many prayer requests lifted up this morning. And so I encourage you to continue to be praying for those families as well as, as we look towards prayer this week, we will lift up those families. We also have worship here online at 8.30 as you are joining us now and then in person at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. If you plan to come in person, our only request is that you wear your mask and you remain socially distanced. I know we say that every week, but it really is important. Ashley and I really do uphold our vow to do no harm and to care for our congregation in the best way that we can, and that's by remaining socially distanced and caring for one another, mind, body, and soul. Those are the only announcements I know of. Do you know of any others that are, I know we have Ash Wednesday coming up that you may want to mention. Yes, so Ash Wednesday is going to be the 17th, 
And if you want to come for drive through ashes, um, you can come through the circle. Pastor Katie or I will be there from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, we'll give you the ashes and we'll say a prayer with you and for you. And uh, it will be a holy moment, even if it won't be a whole service. If you feel comfortable joining us live and in person, then we will have our service in the sanctuary at 6 p.m., correct? We'll have our service at 6 p.m., and you're welcome to come and join us uh, again that evening or for the first time that evening as we begin the season of Lent. And for our Lenten season, we are going to be walking through the wilderness. So uh, you should be receiving your uh, newsletter if you haven't already. And there is an article in there about the book that we are going to be studying. We'll also have it on Facebook, and we may even try and get it on the website. Um, but we will make sure to communicate with you if you aren't yet receiving our newsletter. Walking through the wilderness, and I want to say it's Beth. Do you remember her name? It's not Beth Robinson. Is it Beth Robinson? Okay, well, there you go. Um, and you can find it at the Upper Room or at the Cokesbury store. As we walk through the wilderness... We're going to be finding Jesus. We are finding Christmas for the season of Advent. We're going to be finding Jesus as we move to Easter. And so we'll be looking at all the different spiritual exercises or spiritual disciplines that are out there, ways that we can flex those muscles, and we can continue to search for Christ with all of our hearts. All right, our final song of blessing is 10,000 Reasons. And if you are singing with us, uh, Rodney, this morning, I want to hear that that great bass through all of the different uh, all the different walls because I, I remember singing this one with you regularly in the 905 service. Bless the Lord. All right, here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes And bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore, forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. One more time, sing out for Jesus. And bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. 
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I'll worship your holy name. God, I'll worship your holy name. And so as we move from this sacred space and into the next sacred, not because of who we are, but because of the great filled disciples that we have been called to be, the Christ who lives within us, I pray that you'd receive this benediction and blessing. Go forth with the knowledge that Christ has made you one of his many homes. Go forth living into the greatness of, of who God is and can continue to be through you. Go forth and serve with a heart filled with joy and thankfulness and gratitude. Go forth and bless others and be blessed in return. In the name of the three in one, amen. Take care, God bless, we'll see you next week.